Hi, I'm Maggie Lake, your host for this special UN Global Compact series, Financing a Sustainable Future, CFO Insights. You'll hear from the chief financial officers who are part of a special task force convened by the UN. They are using their platforms and influence to reshape the future of corporate finance and invest to help achieve the sustainable development goals and build a resilient future. This is CFO Insights. Maggie, uh, I think what we uh, can bring to the table as CFOs is uh, the pragmatic approach and also uh, the um, link that we normally have to KPIs. We are, you know, CFOs normally look a lot at indicators. I think when it comes to ESG, we have to develop those indicators and we have to make sure that they make sense from the strategic and financial point of view also to the company. So I think one important role here is to uh, bring some uh, uh, pragmatism to the table and also uh, to, to, to make sure that whatever we're doing uh, is sustainable also from the economic point of view. I personally don't believe that um, we, we would go far by doing something that is not economically sustainable to the companies. You're the first emerging market issuer to come to market with a sustainability-linked bond, for example. Talk to me about that decision. I, I like to say that uh, that decision is uh, a consequence and not, you know, we, we have not decided to get more involved with the uh, ESG aspects in order to do financial transaction. A financial transaction is a consequence of a strategy that was developed over many years and uh, that led first to, uh, you know, as you may know, Susanna comes from a large merger two and a half years ago. So we had to integrate the two companies to make sure that we had uh, uh, integrated KPIs, that we were measuring things in the same way. And then after we did that, we, we felt we were mature enough to make uh, some public commitments when it comes to ESG targets. And then as a consequence of that, we decided to do financial transaction transactions uh, that we did, like uh, the sustainability-linked loan and the sustainability-linked bond, using the targets that we defined not for the bonds or the loans, but for the company. Reducing cost of capital is a consequence of a good work that we're doing uh, in, when it comes to ESG strategy and execution. And those SD, uh, SDG-linked bonds were, were well-received. What does that mean for your industry? Is this going to set precedent? To our surprise, uh, the uh, you know the level of interest was very very high. We held more than a hundred meetings uh, in the in the roadshow with a lot of interest in discussing the details of how the targets were set and how we intended to achieve those targets. And I think that was important for uh, not only for the industry, but also to open you know when it comes to emerging markets. Emerging markets, uh, of course we normally have a, a lower level of access to capital when compared, compared to developed markets. And I think this opens a new avenue of potential interest because by doing a transaction like this, we're bringing to the table investors that would not normally look at, uh, at emerging market companies. And uh, because of the ESG component, they decided to, to pay attention to what we were doing. And I think this is uh, very beneficial uh, to the region. Do you think that the fact that we're seeing innovation in the market, seeing new types of instruments that are now available, is that going to help accelerate your ability to, to achieve or strive toward the sustainable development goals? I believe so, because, you know, uh, the, the, what really changed in the last 18 to 24 months was that uh, investors are willing to pay a premium for impact investments. We did our first green bond about five or six years ago. And the green bond that had a use of proceeds rule was very well received by the market, but was priced exactly as if the bond was not green. So there was no advantage for the company. And, and it really, you know, to do a green bond or a, 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 an SLB, it requires effort from the company. You have to monitor, you have to do many things. And if you say, look, I'm doing all this and I'm getting the same price, some people would say, you know, it's not worth doing it. We decided to take the route of in, insisting in this concept because we said, and we it, it proved to be right, that at some point the market would uh, 
pay a premium for that. And this started with the, um, the, tr the most re recent transactions where, you know, the market developed this concept of the greenium, uh, meaning that they are willing to accept a lower uh, return in transactions that would generate some other benefits to the society. I think this is great because this is re reducing the cost of capital to the companies that are trying to do the right things. And this will further incentivize other companies to go in the same direction. It is, you know, when you look from the economic point of view, what we're doing by in transactions like this is monetizing the ESG strategy. We're really generating value to the company, which is great because it disincentivizes companies to do the right things. And uh, I believe that, uh, you know, the more uh, we, we uh, develop this market, it is going to be beneficial to everyone. Thank you for watching CFO Insights. For more information on the CFO Task Force for the SDGs, you can head over to www.cfotaskforce.org and share your insights on social media using the hashtag CFO Task Force. Don't forget to tag the UN Global Compact at Global Compact. We'll see you again soon.